My name is Diana Aditi Contreras. I was born in Peru, but I grew up here in Miami. And I am an artist, street artist, muralist, fine artist, all the artists. I started painting and drawing women since I was a little girl. I loved to draw princesses and mermaids. And it was always just, I, and also I think loving playing with dolls that all had to do with creating my own uh, woman, my own characters. I started out doing very realistic portraits. As I kept working, it became more stylized and I started um, going back to my old drawings and making them more exaggerated with their eyes, their lips and their hair. And I love putting a pop of color where you don't expect. So that's why I love painting color and that's my favorite thing to do. I just, I've loved art since I was a kid and in elementary school, I would win a lot of awards. And that was, that also kind of gave me like um, validation or made me feel like, oh, like it's not just that I love it, but it's really good. People are, other people are liking it. I became like the artist in my class and I would draw for friends and for other kids that would draw whatever they wanted. <laughs> That's how it all started. Even when I did get rejection, because there's a lot of rejection in this, um, like I didn't get into my dream magnet art school in middle school, I um, I just can't help it. I just, it's for me, it's something that I do to heal me. So I can't ever stop, even if no one likes it. <laughs> in school, in college, I was really discouraged from doing the current illustrative type of work. And they really wanted me to do, you know, um, realistic or conceptual, like with no figure at all. And I did it for the grade, but when I was finished with college, I went back to what I really love to do, what's natural for me. And I think combining what I've learned in school with the things that I love to do is really brought my character to life. And I think combining the two is really um, all of, like reminding everything I've learned is what my girl is. What helped this become a career was really like social media and other people sharing my images and wanting to purchase work. And that's what really gave me confidence into thinking that this is not just something that I love, but that other people may like and be able to make a living off of it. That's one thing that I love about creating murals and street art is that more people get to see it. You don't have to go to my studio. You don't have to go to art gallery. You can just be walking down Little Havana and run into one of my girls. And I love people taking pictures with them. I love their interaction with my art. I never tell them that I'm the artist. I just like to see what they really think. And um, it's mostly makes people smile and makes happy. I've heard stories of people saying that it's gotten them through some hard times, you know, seeing like this colorful image um, on their way to work or, or their drive. So I think that making the making people happy and people smile is is what has just made me love street art. Yes, I definitely think Miami is a good city for artists. It wasn't always the case. But now it definitely is. A lot of artists are moving here and there's a lot of, you know, developments. So it's just have become a very artistic place. There's a lot of work for artists here. So I think it's just, it's booming in art and I'm very happy to be here. I mean, Wynwood was where I think I got my, my big break. It's when was where I did my first mural, which was seen by so many people because everybody goes there to see the murals and I got gallery representation there and, and there used to be a lot of art galleries there. And it's changed a lot, but it also has provided um, a lot of commercial work for, for murals in Winwood. And now it's all over the city. Little Havana too um, is a great place for art. And a lot of people are seeing the benefits of how art changes a community, how art can bring attention to a business. I'm doing more and more commercial murals, but I still always love to do my own 
you know, expression. I have done murals all over. Um, one of my favorite cities is New York, of course. And I just did one last year with Hera from Paracoot. She's amazing. And I also have done murals in Iowa, um, which was very surprising. And I saw, I was like one of the first murals in in Iowa, in Dubuque, and now there are multiple murals and the city is booming, just like how I saw when it would change. That city is changing and getting all really cool. And even in Mexico, I have murals there. So I wanna be everywhere. Hire me, I will go to your city. <laughs> no, I can paint with anything because I feel like if you're a real artist, you anything you could take mud and paint something with that you can take garbage and create a sculpture like you just can't there's no limits you know so you don't need money to buy supplies you can make you can find stuff and make it if you really want to it's no stopping a real artist what keeps me going and painting i just it's something inside of me that i've just as a little girl i've always done and now that I have this creative space to paint all the time, it's a room where I can be creative and messy. That just, this is like my happy place. Now my art can help other people. I can use this art to um, donate to many charities, which I love. So it's just something, it's just like a gift that keeps on giving. You know, I love it and it's therapeutic for me and it keeps me happy and makes me a better person and a mom because I'm, content in my day, but also it can benefit so many other people because other people like it. So I, I love to donate and give my time to helping others. And that just fulfills me so much that I, that's my motivation. I love working with clients. I love to collaborate. I love their ideas. I love um, making it work with mine. And they usually people select me because they like my work already. If they trust the artist, it always comes out the best. The process is definitely like conversations. Also, I like them to send me images, create a mood board so I know exactly what they're thinking. And then I create a few sketches for them to approve. And once they approve the sketch, I create the mirror or painting. I have been doing this for so long. I think for the first time I sold the piece was 2009, but I was always uh, scared, terrified to leave my job as a teacher. So I continued working, doing both. I would you know, be a teacher in the day and then spend the rest after school to nighttime painting and creating art. And it wasn't until a year ago that I took the leap of faith to quit my job in the middle of the year and do art full time. I've been encouraged by a lot of friends that do it full time already. And at that time I was getting so much work that I just couldn't do it all. I'm also a mom, so being a mom and working full time, two full time jobs I couldn't do, so one of them had to go and that was you know, being an artist and it's truly satisfying. I'm so happy. I'm on my own schedule, I can be with my kids. Mm -hmm. I do what I love to do. So it's just, I'm happy, so it's less stressful. My first mural in Wynwood was the game changer. And I think it was because of location. It was next to Joey's on 2nd and 24th. It was a great location. And it was surrounded by amazing artwork by internationally mural superstars. And I could not look bad. So that was a lot of pressure. You know, there was no female artist at the time. There's nothing, you know, around there. Um, and I was local and a female. And I really have never done that before, but I took the job and I painted a 15 foot mural of a Latin woman with long black hair and a little black dress and a pink bow. And um, she had a very strong stance like this and um, it took me two weeks to paint. It took me so long because I didn't know what I was doing. A lot of errors. I didn't have friends in the scene yet because I was new. So I was just by myself and I would go after school, paint at night. It was very dangerous back then, but I didn't really care. I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to leave my mark. I didn't expect much because I had been doing art for so long 
and nothing really happened from it but it like got like so much press from I mean, New Times, from Huffington Post, from everywhere. Everybody wanted to know like who was the artist, who, you know, and I, at first I was very scared and shy and <laughs> I was not expecting that. But I, I learned from that experience that I need to speak. And that was like also one of my first interviews was after that mural with Huffington Post, like having to speak and speak up for myself. And that, that changed everything that really gave me a lot of confidence and then social media an instagram post was like 26,000 likes in a day and i didn't even have instagram at the time so i got instagram right away after that and it didn't even last long it lasted for three months but having like the mural at the time in the right place the right time is what um changed my life i think but people were like this is female empowerment this is, they were like going really deep with it. I was like, oh, I never thought of it that way. But yeah, I don't mean to do the female empowerment uh, images, but I feel so empowered when I create them that I think it comes out. Like I feel powerful, like creating something out of nothing and painting something large. So I think that like energy comes out in them, but not on purpose. Right. <laughs> I love festivals. I wasn't invited at first, so I used to crash them. The first one that I that I crashed was in uh, Montreal, called the Mural Fest, and I, that's a great festival. I didn't know how amazing it was gonna be, um, but me and my friends were like, let's just go over there and see what happens. And we had um, made a post like, oh, we're going to Mural Festival. We tagged the Mural Festival, and then they reached out and they were like, do you guys want to paint? <laughs> then we flew to Canada. And I also got a hotel where I, I was painting them in artwork. So I would paint a mural in all of our rooms so we would have rooms to stay. And we painted at the mural festival. And then we also got work while we were there. Other people saw our, our work and they hired us. So we just had the best time. I also loved Akumal mural festival. Being in Mexico, um, just the people, you know, and you're there by the beach and they gave us just beautiful out like places to stay and um, food and they just treated us so well that everyone like loves that one wants to go back. And I painted a mural there with my husband and competitions. I love to do secret walls and my I usually partner up with Brian Butler, who's another artist in Miami. I love I'm very competitive. I guess I didn't realize that, but I am very competitive. I like to win at everything. <laughs> but yeah, so I love I love competition. So I'm down to do battles. I'm down to. Um, I'm also I'm used to rejection too. Like it's, if I lose, it's not a big deal, you know. So by the way, whenever I see when I apply, because I want to go all over the world. <laughs> That's what I love about this job too. It's always different. I'm always excited, I'm always nervous. First of all, I'm scared of heights. So the ones that are really high, the first one that I felt was, it was huge, 50 feet high, and it was on a roof. I don't know how they got the lift up there, but they, there's a lift there. And um, it was really large, and I just had a baby. I, yeah, I did it five days. I hired an assistant, and they had someone managing the lift for me, and I also worked from morning to night. Uh, the people of the festival were like, come see, come party with us, come take a break, you know. They had a whole party for us. I just wanted to make sure I finished first. So my first mural that was small took two weeks. And now this mural that was gigantic took me five days. That one was in Dubuque, Iowa. Just the beginning of Iowa. They always tell me that. Dubuque is the beginning of Iowa. <laughs> I definitely have a really special one. It's one that I did last year with the artist Hera from Heraku because it's, she's somebody that has been doing murals before me, 10 years before me. And I really admire her work and I just like love her, her style. And I always looked up to her and I've seen her painting in Winwood and I've gone to her art shows. And then when she asked me to paint with her, it was such a huge honor and I was very nervous because <laughs> it was also another really high building in New York 
that's on New York, you know? Like, I want to make sure it comes out amazing. It was really tall, too, and just getting to know her was like a highlight of my career. Just, I love her so much, and her, her personality and her, her heart is way better than even her art. So that was definitely a very special um, collaboration that we did together, and Miro, it's one of my favorites. My most popular pieces, I think, are the first one that I ever did, the Sophia one in Wynwood, even though she was only for three months. Shortest lived mural, but most popular. The next one would be the one here in Little Havana. There's on 17th and 8th, there's like a girl overlooking the town and it's been there for a long time. And, the, and it's the entrance, so that's another popular one. And then I think the, uh, the bus is another popular one because a lot of people always request that image like on other things or something similar to that image. So that one is the most popular one. It was a painting wrapped. It had like an art manager helping me out and they converted my art into something that could be wrapped on the bus. And it was only supposed to run for a, a year, but it's been over five years now, six years. My son is gonna be seven. So maybe like six, seven years. And that's why I was, never, ever, I was never able to ride the bus because I just had a baby and I couldn't go to like the, the party to celebrate it. So that's why my goal is to ride that bus before I die. <laughs> <laughs> Another really cool mural that I did was for the movie Suicide Squad. They wanted us to have a lot of creative freedom. Me and another artist, Amanda Valdez, we had the Suicide Squad characters like as if they got to Winwood. So what would they do if they got to Winwood? They were like spray painting, they all had spray cans on them, and it was just really fun. I was pregnant painting it, I couldn't say no to the project, and the highlight was that we got to walk the red carpet and meet all the actors. So we got to hang out with Margot Robbie, Will Smith, and the director, and everybody. It was really cool. I also have a mural at where the Panthers play in Sunrise. I created that one specifically for the Panthers. And I was it was very exciting because they kept winning and they went to like the finals, right? The crowd is amazing. They're big fans and it gave a lot of energy and inspiration for this mural. It's my girls with a, a Panther with the hockey helmet, a hockey puck and then the Panthers in a very colorful style. So it was really cool. Oh, and the Ford car. That was their sponsor. <laughs> Painting in Miami in this weather, and this heat, is horrible. I think we have to charge a fee for painting in the summer. <laughs> it's really, really hot or it is raining. I have to paint in the heat because when it rains, all the paint will smear. So I had to paint in heat. So we just get like, you know, umbrellas and lots of Gatorade and just try to like, or work at night with the light. So that's what we do to get around the heat. It's really, really bad. I thought I almost painted this year. <laughs> and then I tried to paint on a cloudy day, but then it rains. And then we had um, some crazy wind, like a hurricane, and like a lot of almost fell, like on my husband. So it's, I'd rather paint in heat than rain and wind. Yeah, I've had rain just just take a whole mural down that I spent hours painting, just disappeared. My inspirations, people that just really inspired me as an artist are Hera, Coot, Hera from Heracoot. Um, I love Fafi, uh, Miss Van. Those are like the big names, but there's so many just female artists that I follow on Instagram that I always like love. And they inspire me all the time, you know, like with the, with the braveness of like the large scale or like just improving, seeing them just develop their work. It's just amazing. I love to do collaborations with people that are just professional. They know what they want. If a client, um, knows exactly what they want. Um, they show me images and it's they're very clear. And they also trust the artist. Those are the best collaborations. The ones that are difficult are when people are undecided 
undecisive or they want you to do art like another artist maybe an artist that's your friend it's weird just hire the other artists but i love to work with other artists when they are you know on time when they are professional when they work hard it's just easy you know it's i it's hard when somebody that you're working with um just you have to like you know push them to like show up or to finish something and not meet a deadline so that becomes hard so i love to work with professional artists and professional you know, people that trust you to trust each other know each other's strengths that's why me and brian butler are non-defeated champions because <laughs> we work well together you know so things like that Music is so important. <laughs> I love all kinds of music. When I am trying to meet a deadline, trying to move faster, I choose upbeat music. I, I like, like booty music, Miami <laughs> booty music. When I feel like I can't do something or something's too hard, maybe I'll put like Tupac, something like hardcore, like, yeah, I could do it, I'm a gangster. And mostly that. <laughs> <laughs> Those are, I switch between like like that kind of dancing or like hardcore rap. Oh, when I'm in the studio, maybe more relaxed because I'm here in the AC. There's no rush, so maybe some like '90s alternative music, <laughs> some cranberries. <laughs> so I love everything. Like my, there's a DJ here in this office, and he's always like, wow. Like <laughs> you go from like disco to like you know like like peruvian like indian music like i go everything yeah so i love all kinds of music i used to work in the music department when i was younger yeah i love that funny reggaeton like makes me go faster this is the fast beats and there's dancing <laughs> i am i'm so happy that i don't have it's not like a huge problem for me especially here being a local that my artwork does not get vandalized i think people like respect you know art and then if they know me they respect you know my work so I, that doesn't normally happen like everything else will get tagged and then mine will be left alone and then the, the, they'll skip me or the next person um when i have gotten tagged i just clean it up right away don't bring attention to it, just fix it and move on. I mean, I did a, like an all women's mural. Some guys thought that it was time for us to go and that, that they should have the wall. So then they tagged, they started painting over it. So then we got mad and we painted over them and put our stuff back because our stuff was there originally. And then they uh, wrote like, oh, this is a man's world. I think we wrote like women, women's wall or something. Or this is a man's world and like all this like stuff. Like, <laughs> but then they got confronted, and we got the wall back. I can understand why people vandalize out of anger. If that was you know your wall or something, and somebody goes over it with something dumb, like I I get why you would do it. I have vandalized somebody's stuff that has gone over me before. <laughs> I don't know if they would know that it was me. <laughs> it feels great to get revenge, but yeah, I, I don't think it's it's the the nicest thing to do. You know, definitely trying to not try to be nice, trying to be disrespectful. So yeah, I try to like be respectful of people's art. I try to I like to paint walls that no one has painted before, so I don't go over anybody. I hate going over anyone, except, especially friends that I've had to before. Um, and when people paint over me, like if they get hired, it, it hurts every time, even though they're getting, you know, like it's a job. It still hurts me every, every single time. I have always loved fashion. So one of the things on bucket list is to collaborate with like a cool fashion label and do some things with that with my art. I also, people always tell me that like my artwork looks like I could do makeup. So I would love to collaborate with Rihanna and Fenty. Anything with Rihanna, <laughs> that's on my bucket list. Rihanna does have one of my paintings that her brother commissioned me to paint. And what I think is really cool is that I had painted it all pink around that time that I had painted it for her. Um, her Instagram got shut down. 
but I had wrote her a message in the back how much I love her art, how much, you know, she, her music, I just love, you know, her fashion, everything. And I, the next picture I saw after she received my painting was that her hair was pink, the same color that I had painted it. So I think she got my, I think we, we communicated. <laughs> she got my message. <laughs> And since I'm Peruvian, I grew up here, but I was born there. I would love to go back to Peru and do some murals, um, an art show, do something, do an art residency, and really like embrace like my heritage into my art and and give them something back from me, you know. Evie Queen is like one of the first ladies of reggaeton and she's been doing it for so long and her music is iconic and classic and um, I love like the ladies, especially the first ladies of anything. Years ago she reached, she messaged me on Instagram saying how she loves my work and I'm an inspiration and I couldn't believe that she would, you know, write to me like that, you know. She's told me to keep going, that I'm inspiration, she followed me, she was amazing. Recently, I got a chance with Latin Up. I got a chance to work with them to create a painting for her that I got to give to her in person, meet her, and um, that was a great experience. And um, it was, she was lovely. At the end, the legacy that I want to leave is that I, you know, of course, like I love art, I'm an artist, but um, more than just art, I want to give back to people and I want to change people's lives and I want to use the art for that. You know, that's what I was saying, how I love to donate, how I love to give back, like, so that, that I want to be like my main legacy, more than just art. Thanks for watching my story. And to any future artists or any future dreamers, um, just keep going and just never give up and do things scared or do things that scare you.